Hello and good afternoon. We are from group 1 and today we are going to present the exam tool for KID 303 which is regarding the demonstration of PLO to the real life example which is the forearm crutches. Forearm crutches are designed to provide a mobility support and balance the user of patient by transferring the weight of the lower part to the upper part of the body. For example, it allows the weight to be distributed uniformly to the forearm of the user by due to concentrating it to the wrist alone. There are various types of stresses that may occur inside the shaft of these forearm crutches, such as the tensile, compressive, shear, torsion, and bending. These repeated stresses can cause injuries to the user and also failure of the device. By considering the appropriate dimension and also material for these forearm crutches, we will be able to ensure the functionality and also safety of the device for the user for a long term purpose. For the discussion part, we only focus on the lower shaft of this forearm crutches to ease the calculation. So the first question, the Honor aluminum shaft was under axial compressive loading of 9.8 kN. Given that the alternate stress for the aluminum material is 310 MPa and factor of 30 of 12.4, so determine the thickness of the shaft. By using the equation factor of 30 equal to alternate stress divided by the allowable stress, we can find the allowable stress by substituting the value given the equation and we regard the aerobic stress equal to 25 megapascal. And then, we know that the aerobic stress also can be calculated by using the equation P over A, where the A is given here, the equation, and then we substitute the value that we got earlier, and we regard the inner diameter equal to 20.02 mm. To determine the thickness of the shaft, we can use the equation the outer diameter minus the inner diameter and divide by 2. So we substitute the value that we got, and we get the thickness is equal to 4.99 mm or exposimate 5 mm. 1b. Calculate the deformation of the shaft when under the actual loading of 23 mm and given that the young modulus is equal to 69 GPa. Simply by using the deformation formula which is PL divided by AE, we can find the deformation. So we substitute the P which is the 23 mm and negative here we indicate the direction of the loading and then the length of the shaft is 0.7 meter and then the area we use the same equation as in equation 1a and we substitute the b and then multiply with the e so we will get a deformation equal to negative 0.5951 mm or approximately negative 0.6 mm and here we can notice the presence of the negative sign this actually indicate that the shaft becomes shorter or it contract when it's under the actual loading of 23 kN. Next, 1c. Calculate the strain experienced by the shaft when under the same actual loading in the which is 23 kN. So, by using the equation strain equal to deformation divided by the length of the shaft, we substitute the deformation 0.6 mm and the length of the shaft which is 700 mm. We will get the strain equal to 8.5714 multiplied to 10 power of 24. Question 1 for D. Before that, my name is Norali Binti Mustafa with metric number KIP19053. For question D, we need to calculate the axial stress experienced by the shaft. Given that E, which is young modulus, equal to 69 gigapascal. So we can use formula axial stress, which is sigma, equal to young modulus multiplied with axial strain. And we substitute the value of young modulus, which is given in the equation 69 power of 9 pascal, multiplied with axial strain from previous slide that we get 8.5714 power of negative 4. And we get the answer a 59.14 megapascal. We simplify the answer and we take the answer which is 59 megapascal. We also can find the axial stress by using formula uh, axial stress equal to pressure over area. We substitute the value of pressure which is 23 kN divided by area which is 3.9207 power of negative 4 meter squared and we get 59 megapascal. Next, we move to the next question which is E. The hollow aluminium shaft is then subjected to axial compression of 108.2 kN. 
knowing that the length of the shaft decreased to 0.6972 meter and the thickness increased by 0.01 millimeter determine the poison ratio of the material so this is the figure of the hollow aluminium shaft which is uh, the pressure subject to axial compression on the shaft so first we need to find the axial stress which is what using formula pressure over area and we substitute the, the the value and we get 275.797 megapascal next we need to find the elongation which is the difference uh, in the length which is uh, the uh, initial length of the shaft if 0.7 meter minus by 0.6972 meter and we get negative 2.8 power of negative 5 uh, negative 3 meter next we find axial strength which is using formula elongation divided by length that we get uh, we use length initial length and we substitute which is 2.8 power of negative 3 divided by 0 0.7 meter and we get negative 4 power of negative 3 next for hollow shaft diameter we need to find the length which is 30 millimeter minus by 20.02 millimeter and we get 9.98 millimeter next we need to find the axial strain for y and z we use formula as the strain equal to deformation y and z divided by the length and we substitute and we get 2 power of negative 3 lastly we can find our Poisson ratio which is v equal to negative lateral strain divided by axial strain and we substitute the value which is negative 2 power of negative 3 meter divided by negative 4 power of negative 3 meter and we get the value of Poisson ratio is equal to 0 0.5 next we move to the last question which is f we need to determine the modulus of rigidity of the material given that young modulus is 69 gigapascal by using the value of Poisson ratio v from E, we use formula modulus of rigidity, which is G equal to E divided by 2 multiplied by 1 plus V. And we substitute the value of Young modulus, which is 69 megapascal divided by 2 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.5. And we get the answer of Model left of rigidity is 23 megapascal. That's all for me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Enid Hasha, I'm in the family of SIG, IB19002. And now we are going to look how to calculate the maximum and minimum shear stress and also the angle of twist experienced by the hollow shaft of the forearm crutches. For the first question, uh, it's asked to determine the maximum and minimum shear stress. The maximum allowed torsional loading has been given, which is 1.5 kN. And from the picture, we can see that the diameter for both external and internal of the hollow shell has been given, which is uh, for the internal, it is 20.02 mm and for the external diameter, it is 30 mm. Um, before we need to calculate the maximum and minimum shear stress. The first thing that we need to calculate is the polar moment of inertia, which is uh, J. The formula for J is 1 over 2 pi times C2, which is the radius of the external polar shaft, power of 4 minus C1, uh, the internal radius, uh, power of 4. Uh, we can get the value of the radius by simply uh, divide the uh, diameter with 2 and we will get for C1 is 10.01 millimeter and we convert it 
itu 0.01001 meter when situ we will get a uh, 50 millimeter and after we convert it uh, we will get 0.015 meter and uh, the value that we get for C1 and C2 we insert it into the formula of the polar moment of inertia and we will get J is 6.375 S1 and negative 8 uh, meter or 4 and then after we after we get the value of J we can calculate the maximum shear stress uh, the formula is uh, D max times C2 uh, divided by J and T max is the maximum allowed torsional loading uh, which is 1.5 kilometer meter times V C2 uh, which is uh, 0 0.015 meter uh, divided by J which is that we has calculated just now we insert the value and the maximum shear stress that we will get is 352.93 mega pascal and uh, to calculate the minimum shear stress we can use uh, the formula uh, at minimum shear stress divided by maximum shear stress uh, equals to C1 divided by C2 and we insert the value for the C1, C2 and um, maximum shear stress into the formula and we will get uh, the minimum shear stress is uh, 235.52 megapascal the next question asks us to calculate uh, the angle of twist experienced by the shaft of the forearm crutches. We can simply uh, calculate it by using the formula TL divided by JG. To get the total angle of twist, we need to add the angle of twist uh, for next one which is the length of the bottom part of the forearm crutches to the handle and angle of twist of L2 which is the the length of the handle to the up part of the forearm crutches L1, uh, the value for L1 is 0 0.7 meter and the L2 is 0 0.3 meter the T which is uh, the maximum torsional loading is 1.5 kN meter J is the polar moment of inertia which ha we has calculated uh, in the questions before and uh, that we get the value is 6.3751 as one negative 8 meter of and G G is the modulus of rigidity uh, which the value has been given uh, is 22.97 gigapascal we insert all this value into the formula and we add both of the uh, shaft part and we will get the total angle of twist is 1.0243 radius and in degree we will get 58.69 degree Hi, I'm Nusha Zlita Venti Momo Isaini, new metric number 17116740-2. I'm going to discuss the next question and problem, which is given that the couple is shown X in a vertical plane of the crush grid handle, determine the stresses at point A and B by neglecting the square shape rubber coating. As you can see here, due to the coating, it looks like it have the square shape of cross section area, but actually it have this hollow tube which have the circular cross section area.
So first thing first for the for this question, we have to find the area moment of inertia for the cross section area. So as we know that from the previous slide, the cross section area is symmetric. So we can use this simple equation, which is the area moment of inertia of big circle minus the area moment of inertia of small circle. Uh, for the circular section area, we can use the formula of pi over four times r to the power of four. And inserting the r radius value for the big circle and small circle, which is 15 for the big circle and small circle is 10.01. After calculated it, we got the total area of moment of inertia, of inertia is 31875.3373 times 10 to the power of negative 12 meter to the power of 4. Then after obtaining this value, we can calculate the stress at point A and stress at point B using the value of uh, stress equal to negative mc over i. i is the value we got earlier and m is the couple value. c is the value of distance between the centroid and the uh, point. So inserting the value for the c of point a, it is denoted by positive 0 0.015 because it located at the upper part of the cross-section area. Meanwhile, at point B, it is negative 0 0.01001 because it is located at the lower part of the cross-section area. So after inserting all the value, we will got the stress at point A is negative 941.17 megapascal and the stress at point B we will got uh, 628.07 megapascal. Move on to the next problem. By assuming the force omega 1 kN will uniformly distribute it on the grip handle of the crutch while patient is walking, we are going to find the internal shear force V and internal bending moment M of the grip handle by treating the entire handle as a rigid body. So this is the grip handle of the crutch. So first thing first, what we have to do in this question or problem, we have to cut a point J between A and B and draw a free body drawing of AJ as shown below. The length between A and J, we can denote it as X and the resultant force for the distributed load omega, we can put it um, as omega X. Okay, uh, then we have to determine which direction is positive and the resultant for the force in Y direction will be equal to zero because we consider this in static condition. Okay, negative omega x minus v we got zero uh, equal to zero. Then the equation of shear force v we got uh, negative omega x and inserting the value for the omega one thousand times zero point one two zero six we will got the max value of the shear force negative one two zero point six newton. Same in finding the shear force for the internal bending moment. Uh, we can uh, consider it as static and positive for the upward direction. So negative omega x, which is the resultant force times by x over 2 because we put the resultant force at the center of the uh, AJ. So we have to divide by 2 uh, plus m equal to 0. Then we got the equation for the m is negative omega x to the power of 2 over 2. After inserting all of the value, we will got the max value for the moment which is negative 7.27 newton meter after we got all the value earlier which is the shear and the moment value we can draw the shear and bending moment diagrams so the shear diagram would be like this um, considering the equation of v equal to negative omega x and the value you can get this completed shear diagram and for the bending moment diagram considering the uh, equation for the m, the moment, which is negative omega x to the power of 2 over 2, you will got this slightly curved parabolic for the shape of the diagram. And putting all the value, you will complete this bending moment diagram. Lastly, we can con conclude that all device, including in our, our case for arm crutch, will experience shear, stress, and deformation in real life. However, by understanding all the learning outcomes of mechanics of material, this problem can easily be solved and improvement of the crutch in terms of mechanical properties can be done in future. Thus, failure in any device can be minimized and avoided. This is our reference. That's all from us. Thank you.